they didn't pay us again. It was like, you gotta come and do it a third time. So I'm telling my friend and he was just like, I'm not doing it. And I was like, yeah, but they said like they'd pay us this time and then we'd get the back pay from the, and he was like, no, like at this point they didn't pay old boy. They're not paying me. They haven't paid you. We've done, you've done two sessions thus far. Like if they don't want to pay us, that's fine. I have no control over their actions, but the person whose actions I do control are my own. And I'm not going to continue to put myself in a situation to do business with people who cannot be reliable. Hey YouTube, it's me, D or NY Diva 92 as usual. Um, so as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about toxic people, okay? And that would often come in the form of toxic relationships and a relationship between people could literally be anything. That could be a friendship, that could be a romantic relationship, that could be a relative you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, daughter, like, I just wanna talk about toxic people as it pertains to any form of toxic relationship. And I wanna start with conflict because generally that is the interaction that kind of exposes a toxic person and it helps you to, it's in those instances that you realize that you might be dealing with a toxic person. Now, and I think when any person comes to a conflict, it is really important that you soul search, self-reflect, and come to the table able and willing to admit that you've done something wrong, acknowledge if you've done something wrong, and even in instances where you may not necessarily agree with accusations that are being placed upon you, I think if someone that you care about is suffering at the hands of something that you may have said or done, even if it was unintentionally hurtful, the best thing to do in an instance like that is to simply apologize, even if you don't agree with it. For example, um, I'm a teacher, so I've, <laughs> I teach first grade and I have students that, I'm just gonna give a brief like scenario steps on another student's foot or shoe and that student you know gets riled up and revved up and wants to either fight or tell me can't stand tattles but <laughs> but tell me um or like obviously the simple thing would be to be like yeah you just stepped on my foot like hey and i have walked into situations where like you know somebody's raising their hand and i go up to them and i'm like what's going on like, well, you know, Joey just stepped on my foot and he won't apologize. And then Joey's like, like, I didn't step on her foot. I never touched her foot. Like, I didn't do it on purpose. But instead of Joey simply apologizing in this instance, you're arguing back and forth with that person about whether or not you did or didn't do the thing that they said hurt them, right? And typically... I get on a Joey. Like, there's no question or no doubt about it. There's no instance where I'm going to ask that student to question themselves and be like, are you sure you stepped on your foot? You know, are you being sensitive here? At no point am I going to direct my redirection towards Susie, who got her foot stepped on. I'm looking at Joey, okay? And I'm like, Joey, whether you believe that you stepped on this person's foot or not, even if you don't think that you did, accidents happen like sometimes you just you don't realize that you're doing something i've accidentally bumped into someone i've accidentally stepped on a foot or two you know what i mean and maybe you don't realize that you've done it but the best thing to do in that situation is to simply say i'm sorry it was an accident i didn't mean to are you okay have some concern for the person that you maybe not in this instance but like in toxic relationships that are built on romance or friendship in this case, friendship might apply, but yo, just apologize. And then, you know, Joey will come to terms and be like, I'm, I'm sorry. And then Susie feels better, okay? Like, that's it. Even in instances where I've gotten into disagreements with people and I did not agree with their accusations upon me, to the point sometimes where I'm like, yo, you're flat out lying. I did not say or do that, <laughs> but okay. 
I'm not gonna accuse you of lying. It's quite possible that I just don't remember. I am willing to accept that my memory could maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, completely vanish. <laughs> but let's say that it, it did, it does, okay, whatever. I'm sorry. In the event that you're dealing with someone who has like, you find no fault with yourself, okay? Um, you are completely blameless in any and every conflicting uh, uh, arriving instance, you are blameless. In that case, like I would argue or say, you know, you may be playing the victim here. And in actuality, you might be kind of the toxic one. I don't know. But we're all a little toxic. That's not a shot, you know? I mean, I think we all have good and we all have bad. When I think of toxicity, honestly, I think of the devil. The devil is a liar. He's ugly and he wishes ill upon other people. Try to understand the perspective of others. Just because you don't realize that you stepped on somebody's foot or somebody's shoe, but like, think about what it would feel like for your foot to get stepped on and just like kind of see things from a different perspective. And I think that also kind of helps you to be able to self-reflect. Another thing I mentioned is deflection. So same scenario, you know, let's say a student said a bad word. They're telling me about it. Um, what will often happen is I'll be like, did you say a bad word? And immediate, it's like fingers blazing. Like, no, I only said it because so-and-so said it a week ago. Or, you know, earlier today and I didn't know. And it's just all blaming on other people around them. Or so-and-so told me to say it. He made me say it. I heard him say it first. And I'm just like, yo, that's not, bro, what I asked you was, a yes or no question did you say a bad word yes or no you what who is what is all of this i want to know if you said it or not that's it and i think when you are in a toxic situation a lot of times you will see that the other person may tend to deflect like no you did it this one time you did it first or i wouldn't have stepped on your toe if you hadn't have bumped into me it's your fault deflection is another sign that you're dealing with a toxic relationship and now I just kind of want to get into knowing when it's time to walk away from a toxic relationship. And I mean, that could be as intimate as a mother-daughter relationship. That could be as intimate as a six year long romantic relationship. But like just knowing when it's time to give yourself space, distance, time to heal. In my personal encounter with kind of distancing myself from what I would consider to be kind of a toxic relationship. Well, I just feel like if you're constantly brought, being brought out of your character, if you find yourself developing like mental health issues, like having anxiety every time you have to um, consider conflict with this person, um, that's a form of like manipulation. That's like a form of manipulation based out of fear. Know that it is unhealthy and space and distance are the best things that you could do. Personally, the question came up as to whether or not requesting space or distance for the purposes of being made to feel emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually bullied. I was like, yo, is that Christ-like to distance myself? Like, is that wrong? The question came up of like, should I communicate how I'm feeling that I want space and distance? And my spirit kind of said, yeah, communicate and let that person's true colors really shine as long as you've made all of your concerns known you've acknowledged that you're considering distancing yourself and why and if no change is you know able to happen after that on that other person's um front like you may just need to step away i decided to set boundaries like what i would consider to be boundaries you can't pour from an empty cup you know what i mean if you are being emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually bullied, atta feeling attacked, feeling like you constantly have to defend your character or, you know, you're just being <clears throat> physically bullied, like <laughs> you're gonna be empty. You're gonna feel pretty empty and you cannot give help, do good unto other, like the way that you can if you were not being bruised and beaten. I just think that it is important to know when to walk away. I do believe that it is Christ-like to walk away. Um, I was actually told that because 
I provided like if then statements and I'm gonna start this off with a story from my past. When I was teaching in China, I used to do these voice recordings for the high school, the, the like sister high school to the middle school that I taught at. Um, and it was just like English readings um, because it was in China and there weren't a lot of people in the area that had my accent. Um, so I would do these readings on a tape, like they would record it and play it back to the kids to like ask questions on tests or something like that. So anyways, they paid whatever, I, let's say 200 yuan for every session. Yeah, so I did a session with um, a coworker because they needed a girl and a guy. And I actually was the one that signed him up. I was like, yo, it's easy money. He was like, yeah, cool, I'll do it, okay, cool. And they didn't pay us. He was harassing me, I'm harassing them, because he's like, yo, you're the one that hooked me up with this, like, where's the money? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm calling them and I'm texting them and they finally reach back out to me and they're like, hey, um, it was too low. Like you all, you all were not speaking loud enough or y'all were speaking too loud. It was something like that. And uh, we need you to come back and do it again. Well, my friend is like, like, I'm not going unless I get paid for the original one. Like I'm not going. My behind, I go back and I go to record it a little bit louder, a little bit lower, whichever one it was that they needed. And I had to invite another male coworker who at this point had already heard the story and knew what was going on. But he was like, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll do it. So my friend just missed out on 200 bucks. He basically worked for free because they never paid him. So then we go and they did the same thing again. And we specifically asked, hey, like after the first sentence, is this the proper pitch? Is this loud enough or whatever? And the lady recording in the booth was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay, cool. So we continue at that level. They didn't pay us again. It was like, you gotta come and do it a third time because it's too loud. And we're like, yo, but we asked her and she said it was fine. So that's not our fault. We should still get our money. And at this point, y'all owe me 400 yuan. So I'm telling my friend, the most recent one that did it with me and he's an older guy and he was just like, I'm not doing it. And I was like, yeah, but they said like they'd pay us this time and then we'd get the back pay from the, and he was like, no, like at this point they didn't pay old boy. They are not paying me. They haven't paid you. We've done, you've done two sessions thus far. Like, if they don't want to pay us, that's fine. I have no control over their actions. The, the person whose actions I do control are my own. And I'm not going to continue to put myself in a situation to do business with people who cannot be reliable. And when I tell you that hit me so hard, I was like, yo, there is no point in trying to control the actions of another person. You can't control another person. Even God himself gave us free will. It's their right to do what they want to do and they want to mistreat me. And the easiest thing and the best thing you could do in that situation is to just separate yourself. And I created personally some if then statements such as like, if you are going to continue to treat me this way, or if you are going to continue to be hurtful towards me without any form of remorse, you know what I mean? Forced apologies. Um, and I don't even really feel like they're real because they're repetitive situations. You know what I mean? Like you said you wouldn't do this again, but you're still doing this. You know what I mean? Two years later, who, who knows? But like, am I willing to put continue to put myself in that situation? No. So it's important to say, hey, if you are not going to treat me the way that I feel that I should be treated in this particular relationship, friendship, you know, sisterhood, whatever, I will not partake in events or gatherings. I will distance myself. I don't want to be associated or continue to put myself in situations where I could be mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, socially, economically beat down. But I was told that was unrighteous. I was told that is unrighteous that you are providing me with this if then statement out, oh, you won't do this if I don't do that. That is unrighteous. I was told that was unrighteous and I had to really sit with that. And I was like, is it Lord? Like, is it unrighteous? And then I was thinking and I was reflecting and I was reading the Bible and I was like, yo, even God himself set boundaries. Not that we are God, you know what I mean? 
But even God had to kick Satan out of heaven. Even God had to say, yo, if you're not going to do this, then bow. He casted him out of heaven. That's a pretty big boundary. <laughs> That's a pretty big if then statement. Even our own souls and what our afterlife looks like is dependent upon the boundaries that God has set for his heavenly plan. Yo, bounces at the door like, you ain't on the list. There's been a boundary set. No, I'm just, like, just playing. I hope that's not blasphemous. Um, but yeah, I'm saying though, even God himself has set boundaries. So how is it then unrighteous? And then I even questioned, you know, because we're not supposed to be necessarily looking to God for what to do. We're, that was what Christ was sent, you know, to earth for. How did he handle the masses when he felt betrayed or he felt like, you know, they didn't believe? How did he handle uh, Peter and Judas, who Judas, who flat out betrayed him? Like, how did Jesus handle? Jesus didn't say anything. He stayed silent. And I realized, yo, know, silence is so powerful. You don't always have to hit back. You don't always have to have the last word. Sometimes, like, just distance yourself, especially if you know you're bringing you're bringing brought out of your character in every instance that requires a, a, a difficult conversation like I find myself revved up I find my heart racing I find myself ready to use words or slurs I haven't you know what I mean touched in my mental psyche in ages yeah I gotta I gotta check that I need to distance myself because I'm bringing I'm being brought out of my character I think that's everything that I wanted to say. But basically, you know, if you're in a toxic relationship, the end all be all is you should definitely distance yourself. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope this recording was good because I don't want to do this again. Um, and I'll see y'all next time on NYDiva92.